No. No, stay where you are. Do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is The Haunting Hour. Murder wears a strange mask. Every highway and byway is destiny's trail, and where it leads and what lies ahead is destiny's secret. Down a dark road speeds a car, bearing in it two who are destiny's children. Well, they don't know it. To themselves, they're two people on their way to a masquerade ball. Steve Raymond and his fiancée, Marsha Phillips, heading for an evening of gaiety and laughter. But they are destined to spend a strange, macabre evening in fear. For one of the guests at the masquerade is death. You're rather fetching in your gypsy costume, Marcia. <laughs> in a moment, I'll be tempted to read your mind. Well, there isn't much I can hide from you, darling. Your womanly instincts are quite remarkable. Especially where Joan Williams is concerned? Oh, now, now look here, Marcia. I must admit this magician's disguise of mine isn't too effective. For one thing, it hasn't helped me to change your disposition. Steve. But if you will, my dear, please try to check your suspicions at the door. Fortunately, we're not married as yet, and Ben Carter's masquerade promises too good a time for you to spoil. At the risk of being stubborn, dear, I'm curious to know what you see in her. Or perhaps you can tell me why Roy Benson is still madly pursuing her. I guess he never stopped loving her. He was her first husband. Just the same, Steve, dear. If I so much as see you go near her tonight... I might be tempted to drop a potent mixture in the punch bowl. <laughs> oh, be careful with your predictions, darling. You're a gypsy fortune teller tonight, and I'd rather not see you proven accurate. That's up to you, Steve. You're a little early with your masquerade, Marsha. Wait till we get to Ben's place. Then you can feed Strict Nine to Joan Williams and all my other loves. <laughs> Steve, my shirt. Oh, pardon me. I'm not supposed to know who you are. That wasn't fair, Ben. Uh, what else could we expect from my partner, dear? He knows every hair on my head. Well, don't fear. I won't give you away. Well, you both look perfect. You've adopted a rather simple costume, Ben. I've used this clown suit for 15 years. It's a durable disguise. Good heavens. Who's that fellow in the black tights and shirts supposed to be? Hmm? Oh, he's posing as the royal executioner. Who can it be, Steve? It's hard to tell from here. I don't seem to recognize him. Steve, I've simply got to find out who that executioner is. Oh, now, Marsha. He's just over there. Well, can't you wait till midnight? Quiet, quiet. Here he is. Oh, I, uh, I beg your pardon. Good evening. That's a very unusual costume you're wearing. Thank you. I uh, merely borrowed it from a friend of mine. I hope it's effective. Your voice, it, it's quite familiar. Oh, now, Miss Phillips, don't you recognize Steve Raymond's rival for Joan Williams' hand? Roy Benson. Oh. <laughs> Of course. I follow Joan everywhere. And especially on a night such as this. I couldn't resist seeing her dressed as Cinderella. And in a very charming costume, too, no doubt. Oh, but naturally, my wife, I beg your pardon, my former wife, has a talent for being beautiful. Now, what sort of executions do you have a hand in, Roy? Oh, no special method, Steve. I have really no preference. Hush, gentlemen. The dream approaches. Cinderella. Oh, my, what a charming trio. A magician, a gypsy, and an executioner. You're looking lovely, my dear. Thank you, Roy. How are you, Marsha? I don't know. As yet. How are you, Steve, dear? Looking for a glass slipper, Cinderella? And perhaps a way to break our engagement. Perhaps. Quiet, everyone. Ben's getting ready to speak. Ladies and gentlemen of the masquerade. 
As master of the revels, I welcome you to the ball. You've been asked here, disguised in the roles for which you have all longed these many years. You're all strangers to one another, your identity known only to yourselves. Thus you will remain till midnight. But till that hour, the mystery of the unknown is yours. The excitement of living a dream is in your hands. I see a magician here, a peasant, a statesman, a clown such as myself, and... Oh, there, there's Cinderella, who at midnight will find that dreams must end. But until the clock strikes, give yourselves to music and wine and dancing. <laughs> The wiles of a sorcerer are many. Oh, show us another trick, magician. No, no, I must put my knives away now. One more trick and your eyes will be quicker than my hand. <laughs> Steve, I've got to see you. Oh, want to know how I did that last trick? Come here, quickly. What's the matter, Ben? There's something upstairs I want you to see. Can't it wait? You had better come now. <laughs> Whatever it is, you're guarding it like a state secret. Ben, don't look so pale. It can't be as bad as all that. Were you up here earlier this evening? Yes, I think so. Were you in the library? Mm, you must have been spying on me. I was there a little while ago. Where are we going? To the library. Here. Here we are. There. In front of the fireplace. No, it can't be. Unfortunately, it is. Joan Williams. Stabbed to death. I don't believe it. It's not an illusion, Steve. It's real. I found it like this a few minutes ago. But how did it happen? I thought you could tell me. What are you talking about? Look at that knife closely. Good heavens. Isn't that one of the knives that you were using in your demonstration tonight, Steve? Oh, you're talking nonsense, Ben. I didn't kill her. Who said you did? Well, you inferred it. Oh, what's the sense of this wrangling? Joan's dead. I didn't do it, but I want the man who did. There's a set of prints on the knife handle, Steve. If they match yours, well, that's the answer. You're pretty well convinced that I murdered her, aren't you, Ben? We'll let the police decide that. I'm going to call them. Well, no, no, you can't, Ben. You've got to give me a chance first. No? What do you mean? I swear to you that I didn't do it, Ben. Now, you've got to let me find who did. Just a few hours, that's all I need. Just till midnight. All right, Steve. Till midnight, then. Hello, darling. Who's in the library with you? Oh, come in quickly. Ben told me that you were hiding away in here. <gasps> no! Steve, you killed her. No, I didn't do it. I'm wondering if you did. Don't be a fool, Steve. You can't get away with murder that easily. I had no motive, Marcia. Unfortunately, you did. Does anyone else know she's dead? Ben found the body. And he's called the police? No, he's given me till midnight to find the murderer. Oh, what a complete waste of time. Uh, not altogether, Marcia. Have you forgotten your prediction earlier this evening? That's of no importance. I'll admit I'm glad she's dead. But my wishing it didn't put that knife in her back. That remains to be seen, darling. Let's get it over and said with Steve. I hope you're guilty. I hope they hang you. You've treated me like a fool. You've asked for everything you're going to get. I didn't know you could be so vicious, Marcia. I only hope that I'll be able to testify against you. Thank you, my sweet. I'm not interrupting, am I? No. No, I'm leaving. Good luck, Steve. Don't go too far away, Marcia. You might be very helpful to me. I'll be here when the police come. So long, Marcia. Well, we both lose, Roy. Yes. So Ben told me. He also said he thinks you did it. But I don't agree. Thanks. Well, how about some evidence? Haven't you any ideas at all? No, but that executioner's costume of yours worries me. I'm sorry, Steve, but this is my night off. My record's as clean as yours. How about Ben? I can't figure out a motive for him. Well, he's my business partner. He might be trying to pin this on me. Very weak, old pal. Did you have a motive? Well, I wanted her to marry me again, but she refused. Said she was waiting for you to make up your mind. The police could claim I killed Joan to get her out of the way. Oh, they'll dream up some motive. I'll tell you what I'll do, Steve. I'll come in with you. I don't think you did it. And I've as much a stake as you in finding the murderer. 
Thanks, Roy. But we've got to work fast. I want to talk to Marsha. She had a pretty good motive for killing Joan. Yes, jealousy is still fashionable, Roy. That's a good lead. You'd better quiz Ben. See what you can find. He's been pretty anxious to call the police. I wonder what he's hiding. Suppose you rattle a skeleton or two in his closet, Steve. Maybe we'll come up with a murderer. <laughs> so far, Steve? It's not very encouraging, Ben. Remember our agreement. Midnight's the deadline. You know, Ben, I've completely neglected to ask you some rather important questions. Hmm? No. What's on your mind, Steve? Well, for one thing, how come you happened to find Joan's body? I'll tell that to the police. Oh, I'm trying to clear myself of suspicion of murder, Ben. Make a very bad debating partner. Why not question Roy Benson? Now, listen, Ben, this is no idle business transaction. You've accused me of murder. It might be decent enough to explain why I should be so certain of your innocence. Suppose I call the police. Right now, Steve, let them settle the question of where the guilt belongs. You you promised to hold off till midnight. Very well, then, but you might do better trying to clear yourself than just standing here arguing. Goodbye. Where are you going? I have an appointment with an executioner. Want to come along? <laughs> Is Roy waiting in the library? Yes. That's strange. What's wrong? The door's locked. But the key is in the lock. Here, here, let me open it. Here we are. Ben, look, there by the table. Great Scott. It's Benson. We're too late. He's dead. It's horrible. And the bullet did a thorough job. Strange we didn't hear the shot. I used the silencer. It's still on the gun. No, don't touch it, Ben. Leave it for the police. I want to apologize, Steve. You're completely innocent. How do you know? Well, it's obvious now. Roy killed Joan probably because he was incensed at her refusal to marry him again. Then he committed suicide at the realization of what he'd done. Well, that's a logical explanation, Ben, and it clears me completely, but I can't accept it. Why not? Because Roy didn't commit suicide. Steve, look at the layout of the room yourself. The gun's in his right hand. He was shot in the right temple. And the body of his victims beside him. Very neat deduction, but you left out the one flaw. Hmm? What's that? The door to this room was locked from the outside. Obviously, death was instantaneous. If Roy had shot himself, he couldn't have locked the door from the other side. Yes, you're right. I unlocked that door myself. Yes, Roy Benson was murdered. And the killer must have been frightened away while he was locking the door. Then you're still implicated. But it's a rather gruesome joke on you. Somebody killed the executioner. A murderer has a sense of humor. Fine. Maybe my laugh's coming up. Destiny's Highway has led Stephen Raymond and his fiancée, Marsha Williams, to the home of Steve's partner, Ben Carter, where a masquerade ball is in progress. It is a house of gaiety. Music and laughter pervade the lower floor. Yes, downstairs there is revelry, but upstairs, death. In the library lie the bodies of Joan Williams and Roy Benson, her ex-husband, Steve Raymond, who has come to the masquerade dressed as a magician, is the chief suspect. For while Roy Benson was shot, the knife found in Joan Williams' body was used in Steve's magic act. Ben Carter, Steve's host, has promised to wait until midnight before calling the police in order that Steve might find sufficient evidence to exonerate himself and perhaps find the real murderer. Steve is alone with Ben Carter. They're talking. It's not very far from midnight, Steve. Well, until they unmask Ben, I have a chance to find the murderer. The same person killed them both. The knife that killed Joan was yours. But whose gun was it? Well, the police can trace the registry. That's impossible. The serial number was filed off. How do you know that? I examined the gun while we were upstairs. But I had told you not to, Ben. I wanted the police to find things untouched. I was only trying to help you, Steve. After all, you're the only one on whom the police can build a case. Remember, it was your knife that killed Joan. Well, whoever stole that knife from me killed Joan and Roy. Better use your magician's get-up of yours, Steve, and see if you can pull a murderer out of your top hat. Yes, I'm going back to the party and do just that. 
Yes, madam, I'm a successful stockbroker. Same thing. How about another chick? Oh, I'm sorry, but I've concluded my last performance. For a long while, I'm afraid. Steve, I've got something to tell you. What is it? I can't tell you. Here, I'll come into the next room. All right. Steve, I think I know who killed Joan and Roy. Good girl, who? Ben Carter. Are you sure? Practically. I was in the library looking at Joan's body, and I heard somebody in the next room. I turned out the lights and hid behind the large chair next to the fireplace. Did he come into the library? Yes. It was pitch black without the lights, but he had a flashlight with him. He played the light all over the floor as if he were looking for something. Do you know what it was? No, Steve. I was afraid to look out from behind the chair for fear he'd see me. How long was he there? Oh, about five minutes. I don't think he found what he was searching for, though. When he left the room, he muttered something about coming back later. Did you come right down here after he left? Oh, no. Right after he left the room, I went to the phone and called the police. Now, why did you do that? Well, I found the murderer. So it was my duty to notify them. How do you know Ben didn't hear you call? Oh, I waited until he was far enough down the hall. I even kept the lights out in case he happened to look back. How long ago did you phone? Just a few minutes ago. I came right down here to you after I called. I'll have to work fast. Come along, Marsha. I want to look at that library. Oh, no light showing under the door. Let's go in. Nothing's been touched since I was here. Now, what could Ben have been searching for? Well, perhaps he dropped something when he killed Joan and Roy. It's possibly, but what? Steve, look. Hmm? There, under that chair near the fireplace. Yes, I see it. What is it? A large black button. I recognize that. Didn't you notice that one of the buttons on Ben's clown suit was missing? Yes, you're right, Marsha. There. Doesn't that prove his guilt? Well, not necessarily. The thing that still interests me is his certainty that my fingerprints are on the handle of the knife that killed Joan. Well, how could it have been used without disturbing your prints? By wearing gloves and using the blade part of the knife for throwing. That's very clever of you, darling. If my prints are still on that knife handle, they were placed there when I used the weapon in my little act downstairs. When it was stolen from me, the prints were very carefully preserved. What are you going to do? I'm going to make a call, try to get some information on fingerprints. Let me have the inspector, please. Wait a minute. Someone's on the other extension. Who is it? Ben. Ben. He's decided not to wait till midnight, as he promised me. He's a little worried. Listen. Inspector Boland, this is Ben Carter, 116 Ocean Road. Yes, Mr. Carter. There have been two murders in my house. You'd better send someone out immediately. Two murders? Both at the same time? No, they happened separately. What's going on up there? Please hurry. The murderer is still in the house. I'll watch him till you get here. We'll lock the doors. I want no one to leave before I get there. Is he? He's giving himself up. I'm afraid he's not, Marcia. He's determined to prove me guilty. Oh, he hasn't a chance. Oh, hasn't he? What proof do we have? Well, I saw him in this room. When Joan and Roy were killed? Of course not. But why was he sneaking around in here looking for this lost button? Well, whatever the reason, I'm afraid my goose and I are cooked quite thoroughly. Oh, no, you're not. Hey, where are you going? Quiet. There's someone at the door. I think you ought to know I called the police. They'll be here shortly. Yes, I know. We heard you on the phone, Ben. I wouldn't advise either of you to leave the house. Why don't you stop all this pretense, Ben? We know you killed Joan and Roy. <laughs> Marsha is still loyal to you, Steve. I was behind this chair earlier this evening when you came up here prowling around with a flashlight. Well, why didn't you help me find what I was searching for? Was it this? Yes. Yes, the button from my costume. Please give it to oh, me. Oh, no, no, oh, no. This goes to the police. Well, I... Oh, don't be absurd, Marsha. I, I lost it up here before the ball began. Well, I'm sorry to contradict you, Ben, but it was on your clown suit when we first came tonight. Well, oh, I... Thanks for calling the police, Ben. All right, I admit I lost it up here after Joan and Roy were killed. I... I wanted the button back because I knew it would look suspicious if the police found it. Mm-hmm. It's midnight. 
I have to end the masquerade. Yes, and we mustn't delay the master of the revels. Uh, coming, Steve? Yes, might as well, Ben. We'll keep an eye on one another until the police decide which one of us is the murderer. <laughs> The time has come when you must leave the mystery of the unknown and return to the reality of the present. The peasant will become a wealthy man, the clown a respected philosopher, the beggar a statesman. This is the moment. Unmask, please. Ben, the police are in the hall. Take care of them for a minute, Steve. I'll be right back. Oh, I'll give them all the clues they require. <laughs> Well, what's the delay? Mr. Carter will be here in just a moment, Inspector. My name's Steve Raymond. I believe that Mr. Carter considers me the principal suspect. Did you do it? No. I hope you'll believe me. I believe no one, only evidence. Would you care to see the bodies? I want to see Mr. Carter first. Come on, Inspector. That came from the garden. Then that's where we're heading for. Let's go. All right, now, calm yourself. We've no time for hysteria. Well, I, I was sitting here under this arbor when I suddenly heard someone moving in back of me. I turned around quickly and saw Ben come toward me. That gun was in his hand. What did he say to you? Oh, his face had sort of a crazy look on it. He told me that I was the only one who could possibly testify against him. He came closest to me and brought the gun down as if to strike me. Did he hit you? No. No, I dodged the blow and... And I grappled with him for the gun. Finally, I managed to get possession of it. And I shot him. It was the only thing I could do. Let me see that gun, Mr. Raymond. You say you are, Inspector? Will you hold the flashlight, Mr. Raymond? Surely. Now, just a little fingerprint powder over the butt of the revolver. There we are. Now, do you see the impression? Yes, there are two distinct sets of prints on the butt. Just as I told you, Ben and I fought for the gun. Is your conclusion the same as mine, Mr. Raymond? I'm afraid it is, Inspector. Marsha lied in her story. That's ridiculous, Steve. Don't you see the two sets of prints? That's just it, Marsha. If you and Ben had fought for possession of the gun, the two sets of prints would have been smudged and blurred. Not distinct and clear as they are now. It was very convenient of you to tell that story. Why'd you try to kill this man? Try. He's dead, isn't he? Not quite. Fortunately for him, one bullet missed and the other just creased his scalp. He'll be around shortly and in fine shape to testify against you. And this was your second mistake, Marsha. I first became suspicious of your sudden reformation in my behalf when you told me you dialed the police telephone number in the darkened library. I was convinced you hadn't phoned when we listened in on Ben's call to police headquarters. It was obvious from the inspector's reaction that it was the first report of the murders he had had. Watch out, young lady. Don't make me chase you through the garden. I'm not that young anymore. Let go of me. Go of me. Of course I killed him. Joan was a worthless fool trying to take you away from me. I stole your knife and used it the way you guessed I did. Your prints were on the handle, but Ben didn't know for certain whether they were yours. Why did you kill Roy? He accused me of killing Joan, and he told me that he had the proof to back up his charge. And I couldn't take a chance. And if I hadn't locked the door, you would never have guessed that it wasn't suicide. One mistake is all that's needed, young lady. Well, Mr. Raymond, I guess that's about all. Yes, Inspector. I'm afraid the masquerade is over. <laughs> From shadows and stillness, mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubts and fears. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory in the haunting hour. <laughs> Thank you.